What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestlers that almost changed WWE history. This should be an interesting video. Looking forward to checking this out. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. There are certain WWE wrestlers who almost changed the course of WWE history. These select wrestlers were extremely close to being part of a major storyline which would have had them completely alter their career trajectory. Unfortunately, the plans to include them in a monumental storyline were scrapped, and the wrestlers themselves and fans always look back and ask, what if? Mm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestlers that almost changed WWE history. Be sure to subscribe and hit that subscribe notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10. Taz. Okay. One of the major angles of the Attitude Era saw Stone Cold Steve Austin get run down by a car mm -hmm. at the 1999 Survivor Series. It would later transpire that Rikishi was the man behind the vehicle. I did it. I did it for The Rock. <laughs> and then Triple H was the mastermind. However, that wasn't always the plan. At one stage, Taz was going to be revealed as a man that ran down WWE's top star. Former WWE writer Brian Gerwitz would discuss these scrap plans during an appearance on the Ariel Helwani show. He stated, I remember at one point Vince looked at me and was like, Taz. At one point it was going to be Taz. Okay, great, let's make it Taz. And you know, for whatever reason, the next week it's someone different. I wouldn't call that necessarily a success. Rikishi is a Hall of Fame performer, but he's likable and a natural babyface, mm. and people want to like him. Sometimes you just don't know until you try. Then ultimately it was Rikishi, but Triple H was behind it all along, and you know, it went back to the natural order of things. Number nine, Mah If If it would have been Taz, I think that would have been cool. I think that would have been cool. People obviously knew who Taz was from ECW. I think that would have gave him a major push as a heel. Because Taz doesn't come off as very likable. So if it would have been Taz, I think that could have potentially really boosted up his career in WWE. Let me know down below what y'all think about that. I think Taz would have been a much better fit than Rikishi saying I did it. I did it for The Rock. <laughs> Muhammad Hassan. In the summer of 2005, Muhammad Hassan was well on his way to becoming the top heel in WWE. Whilst his gimmick was controversial in nature, Hassan mm -hmm. had a ton of heat with fans, and WWE truly had the next big wrestling villain on their hands. Sadly, real life events, as well as a yep. tasteless angle, derailed Hassan's push. WWE decided to air a controversial segment on the day of the 7 7 We've London bombings. The segment saw Hassan began to prey on the ramp, and this summoned five masked men and they were armed with clubs and piano wire, and they began to choke out The Undertaker. The masked men then lifted Davari above their heads and carried him away. Although WWE defended this segment, sponsors as well as SmackDown's TV mm. network UPN weren't very pleased. Nope. Due to the pressure from UPN, WWE decided to drop the Hassan character altogether and write him off television. Now, Hassan was actually initially booked to win the world title in a match against Batista at SummerSlam. Wow. And actually, due to him being taken off television, this never happened. Damn. That would have been interesting to see how this reign would have gone and how the WWE would have presented Hassan as the top heel in the company. Damn, that would have been insane. Wow. It's crazy. Just timing is everything. And once again, WWE, the answer. They answered to the, the networks that per, allow them to be on their network that, you know, give them, you know, pay them money f to run different ads and stuff like that. At the end of the day, if they say no, they ain't got no other choice but to do it. Damn. Number eight, Ryback. Oh, boy. Back in 2012, Ryback had somehow Ryback. obtained huge popularity with the fans. Oh, yeah, you super Ryback over. was super over and super WWE over. decided to push him into the main event picture. Ryback would collide with WWE Champion CM Punk at uh -huh. the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, and there were calls internally for WWE to make Ryback the new champion. Now, these internal calls were based on the fact that Ryback's popularity could be seriously damaged with a loss. Mm -hmm. WWE eventually decided that Ryback wasn't going to win the title, but he was going to stick around the main event scene. This consequently derailed Ryback's momentum as he was never the same following his loss to Punk inside a Satan structure. Yep. Number seven. That definitely, I can agree. I can definitely agree. It, it derailed him. It derailed him because after he lost, it was like, okay, he's probably not going to win. This is one of those things where WWE, they book themselves in the corner. You have one of the most over guys in your company go against the biggest heel in the company. Somebody has to lose. 
And if you don't want to end the streak, then it would have been nice to probably put him in a mid card first, have him win a mid card title, then build up to the main. But they dropped a rocket ship, put him in the main event, even though they knew they weren't going to have him win. Christopher Daniels. Our most fans know Christopher Daniels for his acclaimed work both in TNA and AEW. However, Daniels really, uh, was almost a key element in one of WWE's most infamous storylines. Back in 1999, a mysterious higher power figure was ordering The Undertaker to commit heinous acts and this mysterious being was eventually revealed to be Vince McMahon. However, this initial plan for the higher power character would see Daniels being revealed as the mastermind behind the entire thing. Now, the reason that Daniels' involvement was scrapped was because Mr. McMahon believed that Daniels was too small and wouldn't be taken seriously oh, in the role. Wow. Number six, Damn. Kofi Kingston. I mean, it did work that Vince was behind it because Vince was just the best heel of all time. So. WrestleMania 35 featured Kofi Kingston finally capturing the WWE Beautiful title. Beautiful moment, great Although moment. Although this was a brilliant moment for Kingston and his fans, Kingston almost won the big one nine years prior. Mm -hmm. At the start of 2010, Kingston was starting to build up a genuine connection with the fans and he WWE was. management saw the potential in him. Kingston was a tremendous in-ring talent and the younger members of the WWE audience were really taking to his work. Well, the plan was for Kingston to win the money in the back at WrestleMania 26 and eventually win the title or world title. But sadly, issues with Randy Orton yep, derailed these plans completely and Kingston was moved down the card. He was still involved in the Money in the Bank ladder match, but the match would be awarded to Jack Swagger in one of the most disappointing match outcomes of all time. I'm gonna be honest with you. I really wish Kofi would have got the, the championship rope because he was hot. He was over. When he was feuding with Randy, he was super over, but politicking, man. Politics. Number five, Mustafa Ali. Speaking of the Money in the Bank ladder match, in 2019, plans were put in place for Mustafa oh, Ali to become yeah. Mr. Money in the Bank. Now, this would have been a fantastic outcome as Ali had a ton of potential as a top guy in the company. However, literally moments before Ali was about to make his entrance, he was told directly by Vince McMahon that he wasn't going to win the match. Damn. The match would instead be won by Brock Lesnar. Wow. He wasn't even announced for it. Ali would discuss this during an interview with Talk Sport and stated, I'm winning it, you know. Man, this is this is my moment. This wow. is uh, this is everything I've been working for. I can't believe it. This is this is awesome. Uh, and then I'm uh, the, the match is about to start. The entrance is start. And I I may be wrong about this, but uh, maybe Baron Corbin's making his entrance. Um, and I'm soon to be making my entrance. And then that's when I'm uh, go see the Mind boss up. real quick. You want? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I want. Grab the briefcase, shock, and you're frozen. This is what I want. And you have to realize, uh, right before you go out to the curtain is not the time to kind of argue and yeah, sure. You know, you're you're getting a direct order about what is to be expected of you. And some people, I know some people say like, well, why didn't you just grab the briefcase? I, said, well, <laughs> I was more, I I was more. Uh, I was more concerned with grabbing my check that week, you know? Yeah. So I, I grabbed my check that week. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not my show. Uh, the guy who owns this, who writes this show, who decides what's going to happen, more, but Dave yeah. told me specific instructions, and I said, okay, not a problem, boss. And I went out there and did exactly what I was asked to do. I Number four. Wow, bro. Mustafa's had horrible luck. He was supposed to be... And I believe the Elimination Chamber match that Kofi got that major push in. He was supposed to be in that spot. It was supposed to be Mustafa Ali. That's really who it was, that spot was supposed to be in. And he ended up getting injured in this whole situation. Dad, imagine you you know you're about to win. And then right before you go out there, oh, Brock's going to win. Oh, man. That's that's so screwed. That's that's. That's Vince. That's Vince McMahon booking right there. Mr. Kennedy. I know about the this WWE one. were adamant in making Mr. Kennedy a top star in the company, mm -hmm. and one of the ways they were going to do this was by having it be revealed that Kennedy was Vince McMahon's illegitimate child. This would have propelled Kennedy. I think I remember uh, reports about that. To the next level, and a world title win was even rumored. However, as WWE were getting ready to execute the reveal, Kennedy failed a drug test and was suspended. This forced WWE to cancel oh. Kennedy's push and the storyline was reworked. WWE rather randomly yet hilariously decided that Hornswoggle yeah. would be revealed okay. to be McMahon's yeah, illegitimate son. 
fans will always look back and wonder just how far Kennedy would have reached in WWE if the storyline played out as originally intended. Oh, no. Number three, he Chris Hero and Biggie. Really when the far. concept of the Shield stable was being discussed, one of the names that CM Punk wanted in the stable was Chris Hero. Mm. Punk and Hero had a great relationship and he felt like he would be a good fit alongside Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Vince McMahon would eventually decide on Roman Reigns being in the faction, but this was a smart move as Reigns yeah. would go on to become Very the face of WWE, move. which may have never happened if Reigns was never an original member of the popular group. Oh, bro, that, that was probably the best decision Vince had ever done. One of the best decisions. Putting Roman in that group saved him. It saved him. Because I don't think he would have been ready just to be by himself. There were also discussions in relation to having the Shield debut with four members. Reigns, Rollins and Ambrose would be joined by Biggie. This would have been vastly different, but the WWE made the call to debut Biggie alongside Dolph Ziggler. This Which was worked. the best move for Biggie yeah, as he made worked. a very successful career on his own merit. And it's unknown just how he would have done if he was paired with the Shield back in 2012. Number 2, Mark Jindrak. A Triple H and Ric Flair back in 2002 had the idea of forming a stable similar to the iconic Four Horsemen. The game and Flair looked towards putting Randy Orton and Batista in the group, but McMahon wanted Mark Jindrak in the group instead of Batista. Mm. McMahon believed that Jindrak had a ton of potential and he ordered promo videos to be shot involving Jindrak alongside wow. the group. Following the I, think promo I, shoot, I think I do remember, I think I do remember, uh, watching a documentary of them talking about Triple that. H went to McMahon directly and told him that the stable wasn't going to work with Jindrak involved. Jindrak would have been replaced by Batista and he would have been moved down the card, but it would have been nothing compared if he remained part of the beloved faction. And number one, Mark Henry. I think Batista definitely did work a little bit better. He, it's just he fit, he fit that role a better in my opinion a wwe hall of famer mark henry had a great career that included a world title win but his career was almost even better mm. in 2006 wwe made plans for henry to be the one to end the undertaker's wrestlemania win wow. streak this would even be agreed upon by the dead man himself but as wrestlemania got closer vince mcmahon began to get cold feet Eventually, McMahon cancelled the idea. This was a great move as Henry wasn't the right guy. Wow. His in-ring work wasn't the best and he simply wasn't ready for a win of this nature. Bruce Pritchard discussed these cancelled plans on his Something to Wrestle podcast saying, Vince, as we got closer to it, got cold feet, I guess, and, and just realized that maybe Mark wasn't ready at the time for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that there was a real solid plan on the other side either to make it work. Paul Heyman hated it. I don't know anybody that was like, woohoo, let's go do this, other than Vince. Well, there you have it, folks. Wow, Ten wrestlers very, are almost changed. Very, 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 very interesting, man. Like, that... Imagine if Mark Henry was the guy. Granted, I don't think he... It would have made sense for... I mean, yeah, you're building him up, but I don't think he should have been the guy to end the streak. I'm going to still say the only person that makes sense is Roman. And turn Roman heel. That's the only person I could ever think that would have been the best audible because everyone would have been booing Roman. He would have been the ultimate heel and have him do it. Oh, he would have got nuclear heat and then have him turn heel. I think that would have been that's the only person I can think of now that made sense to be the guy to beat the Undertaker and turn him heel. So and we'll end his streak initially. So. But comment down below, let me know which one of these videos, well, not videos, which one of these stories uh, did uh, surprise you a lot. Um, the whole um, Mustafa Ali part, uh, that surprised me a lot because I didn't know that was a last minute change and he was supposed to win that that money in the bank that one actually surprised me a lot so let me know down below which story surprised you a lot but i appreciate you guys man we're almost there just another five thousand more subscribers and we'll be at 100k but i appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one